Hi, this is a video to demonstrate a tool that I built, which I call the Tolkien Stress Analyzer. And the purpose is to tell you where the stress goes in a word or text in one of Tolkien's languages, because I found that to be a sometimes annoying or frustrating thing to figure out while reading the word, the Lord of the Rings or uh, other books by Tolkien. And the way to use it is fairly simple. You type something in the text box here, and I've just set up a little bit to um, simulate that so I don't have to type it actually all out. It can be a single word like Morannon. You select the language down here. In this case, it's Sindarin. If you're not sure, that's probably fine. Or you can try the other one. And in this case, it doesn't make a difference anyways. And then the result is down here. And you see that it's stressed on the second syllable, Morannon. doesn't have to be a single word. It can also be two words like Turin Turambar or even a whole poem. If we make this a bit larger, um, then we can see something like a Elbereth, Gilthoniel, Silivren, Penamiriel, and so on and so on. Um, and the way this works is that there are some fairly simple rules that determine uh, where the stress goes. I just found it hard to memorize them, but it's not very difficult to encode them in a computer program. And so that's all the website does. And then it shows you where the stress goes with like some um, bold text and all these rules come from Appendix C to the Lord of the Rings, which also explains how to pronounce uh, vowels and consonants and some other things, um, which we're not going to get into here. Uh, we're just talking about stress. And basically, I'm now just going to read out this longer section of the web page, which tries to explain these rules from the appendix in more detail and with more examples than the real appendix does, because in the real appendix, it's like two paragraphs this long or something and a bit um i hope that adding some more detail here uh helps you figure it out and to start with by default uh the stress goes on the third to last syllable of a word and this doesn't mean that that's usually the stress syllable um and the appendix actually explains it the other way around but i find it more helpful to think that by default, the stress goes on the third to last syllable, and then there are various exceptions which can move it a bit forward to the second to last syllable. Um, but if none of those exceptions apply, uh, which we'll get into, then the word is stressed on the third to last syllable, such as Aragorn, Boromir, Denethor, Galadriel, Lothlorien, Undomiel. And if we check the box to show syllable breaks up here, then we can see that this IE here is always two syllables. So in Lothlorien, the Lo is the third last syllable, and then Ri and N are two more syllables. And the exceptions where the stress falls on the second to last syllable instead are if that syllable contains a long vowel, uh, which is marked with an acute accent, or sometimes with uh, this kind of uh, hat. Uh, what's his name? I'm not sure. Uh, usually it's an acute accent, for example, as in Elentari. Quivienen, Kilebrian, Pelori, and Anduril, uh, which in the film uh, Hugo Weaving says as Anduril, Flame of the West, but I think that's just a mistake. It has to be Anduril because the U is a long vowel. Um, the acute accent doesn't necess necessarily mark a stressed syllable, and there are words where it is on a syllable that isn't stressed, such as Nauglamir or Palantir, uh, but the plural is Palantiri, and here it's again on the stressed syllable. Um, but if there is an acute accent somewhere in the word, then it's probably going to be the stressed syllable, um, because if it's on the second to last syllable, then the acute accent is going to move the stress to that syllable. Uh, the stress also falls on the second to last syllable if that contains a diphthong, so two vowels that are read together, such as in... Sauron, Gwaihir, Crisaigrim, Finduilas, Mithaithel, or Ninuyal. None of these examples are very great. Like Sauron only has two syllables anyways. But if there's a diphthong, then it's probably the stressed syllable as well. And the vowel pairs that form diphthongs are actually different depending on which language you're talking about, which is one of the reasons why this tool has to ask you, do you want results for Quenya or Sindarin? Uh, sometimes it matters, like you saw the stress shift a little bit here. Uh, down there, um, because in Quenya, the diphthongs are ui, oi, ai, and iu, eu, au, and in Sindarin, they are ai, ai, a, oi, ui, and au, or in other words, um, the three ui, ai, au are always diphthongs, regardless of language, then there's oi, iu, eu, which are only diphthongs in Quenya, and there's ai, a, and oi, which are only diphthongs in Sindarin. That's pretty hard to remember, I think. Um, the important thing is that 
these six pairs here, which are sometimes diphthongs, but not always. In the other language, where they're not a diphthong, they seem to be pretty rare. Uh, pretty rare. Uh, so you can probably just get by by memorizing all nine of these and thinking that if you see them, then they're probably a diphthong, because if, um, if it was in the other language, then you probably wouldn't see this pair of vowels at all. Um, also, sometimes if there are two vowels next to each other and they aren't a diphthong, then that is marked with this uh, tremor or diuresis character, such as in Feanord or Namarie or Eonwe. Uh, so that's uh, an O and an E with a tremor there, but that's not always the case. For example, we have Moria with an E-A or Ithilien, Eriadord, Osgiliath, and all of these have vowel pairs and they're not usually written with a tremor. So sometimes that helps, but not always. And finally, the stress falls on the second to last syllable if this contains a vowel which is followed by two or more consonants. And this is actually probably the most common one of these three exceptions. So I'm not sure why I put it in the last place, but some exa examples are Mithrandir, Elendil, Isildur, Thorondor, and Utumno. And this also applies if you have two copies of the same consonant, a double consonant, which uh, for pronunciation means that you say the, the consonant for longer, and examples for that are Morannon, Pelennor, Elessard, or Bragollach. All of these also move the uh, stress ahead from the third to last syllable to the second to last syllable. Um, but you have to keep in mind here that CH, DH, and TH, they're written in English with two consonants, but they count as a single consonant. And so we have Karadras, which has two consonants, DH and R, and Falathrim, but also Forochel, Galathon, and Denethor, which are written with uh, two consonants in our alphabet, but it counts for stress as a single consonant. And so the stress here still is on the third to last syllable. And if there are less than three syllables overall, then it's um, always the first syllable is stressed, Amon, Amarth, or Gurond. And I think the appendix says it falls practically always on the first syllable, and I don't think it actually specifies any example where the second or last syllable would be stressed, so I'm not sure why it says practically always. Um, there are also two things worth noting for how the words are divided into consonants themselves. One of them is that why actually has a different role in Quenya it's a consonant so in Quenya it's kind of a consonant but in Sindarin words it's a vowel so in a word like Kalekirdia uh, if that's Quenya then the stress falls on the Kir syllable because it's followed by two consonants which is this R and this Y and in Sindarin the Y would be a vowel you would have more something like Kalakirhiya and then the stress would still be on the kir because then it would be the third to last syllable, but um, the word would be analyzed differently at least. And a name like emin muil can only be seen therein because uh, the min or min would be uh, just three consonants in Quenya, which doesn't work. And also the sequence qu in Quenya um, actually stands for two consonants because it's pronounced kind of like qu. Uh, which you can also spell as a CW. And so the U doesn't make a syllable of its own, but that usually doesn't make a difference because a syllable that starts with QU is usually followed by another one. So it's pretty rare that these two consonants make a syllable stress that wouldn't be stressed anyways because it would be the third to last syllable. And two examples of that are that I found are Atakwe and Otokwe, but I just found these in some... Um, Dictionary of Quenya. I don't think these occur actually anywhere in the Lord of the Rings. And uh, in Sindarin, QU just doesn't appear at all. So if you see that, that's a very sure sign that you're dealing with Quenya. And one final thing to note is that not all of the names in Tolkien's words follow these rules at all, because none, not all of them are from Elvish languages. For instance, Isengard would, according to the Elvish rules, be Isengard, or uh, according to the pronunciation, also Isengard, with an E instead of an I, uh, but it's actually supposed to be an English form translated from the language of the Rohirrim, and so it's pronounced as you would in English as Isengard, uh, with the stress on the first syllable and also the I letter. Um, but I think the English form words are usually not that hard to recognize, and you can also sometimes 
or usually determined from the context which they are, I think. And then I have down here two paragraphs about things that are unclear um, about the rules. And the first is hyphenated words, because Appendix E doesn't say how the stress rules should apply to hyphenated words. They are not very common, but some of them um, exist, such as Gilgalad. And you could imagine that you should analyze each part separately or that the whole word should be analyzed as one thing and you just ignore the hyphens. And um, there's a couple of hints in the text, usually from poetry, that's also going to apply to the next uh, section, um, where the poetry is to be read in a certain meter and that probably tells you how the words in it should be stressed, such as this one. Gilgalad was an elven king of him the harpers sadly sing, which is the Fellowship of the Ring, book 1, chapter 11. And from the meter there, you can tell that it's supposed to be Gilgalad. And then you have every second syllable stressed, Gilgalad was an elven king. And if it was Gilgalad, then that wouldn't work out. So that suggests that you should analyze each part separately. And then you have Galad as a word, and there Gal is stressed as the first syllable of a two-syllable word. And if you were to be analyzing the whole word without the hyphen, then the stress would have to be only on Gilgalad as the third to last syllable. And I had trouble accepting this for a while, personally, because I just got used to Gilgalad, um, which sounded nice to me. And eventually the thing that won me over was realizing um, what this meant for another word, which is Baradur. Um, and there I realized that if I have to say, if I want to say Gilgalad and ignore the hyphen, then I also have to ignore the hyphen here. And then we have the second syllable followed by a double consonant and it would have to be Baradur. And that just sounds stupid to me. It has to be Baradur. And that means we analyze each part separately. And that means it also has to be Gilgalad. And that's what the tool does. Although I think you're free to disagree if you want to. And then there's an even more puzzling thing, which are some names like Imladris and Nargothrond, um, which have the second to last syllable followed by two vowels, dr and thr. And so according to the pronunciation rules, which we've been told, they should both be stressed on that second to last syllable. So Imladris and Nargothrond. However, we have poems that suggest otherwise, such as Seek for the sword that was broken, in Imladris it dwells, Fellowship of the Ring, Book 2, Chapter 2. Or in Fellowship of the Ring, Book 2, Chapter 4, The world was fair, the mountains tall, in elder days before the fall of mighty kings in Nargothrond and Gondolin, who now beyond the western seas have passed away, the world was fair in Durin's day. And some people have noticed this before, and they've even uh, suggested a solution for this, which is that apparently in Latin there's a rule called muta cum liquida, which says that if you have a mute followed by a liquid consonant, um, then they count really as one consonant, both for the purposes of uh, dividing the text into syllables and for the purposes of stress. And so instead of imladris, you have im you have imladris. And you also have Nargothrond instead of Nargothrond. And there's this page called Concerning Stress Placement in Sindarin, uh, which you can go to, which has a longer discussion of this, and also links to some older discussions um, about the same topic. Um, for the purposes of this tool, the important thing that the rule doesn't uh, seem to apply all the time, even if we accept that it exists without it having been mentioned by Tolkien himself. For instance, there's also some words that Gandalf speaks before the West Gate of Moria, um, Book 2, Chapter 4. Annon ethellen edrohi ammen fennas nogothrim lastobeth lammen. And it's pretty clear that nogothrim is supposed to be stressed on the second to last syllable, even though it has the same O T H R um, sequence, and that happens in Nargothrond. And there we are supposed to believe that it's supposed to be Nargothrond and not Nargothrond. Um, and so, as far as I can tell, at least, there's just um, no way to tell when this muta cum liquida rule is supposed to apply and when it's not supposed to apply. And so the tool just ignores this. And if you ask the tool, where does the stress go in 
Imladris or Nargothrond, it tells you it's supposed to be Imladris and Nargothrond, because that's what Appendix E says. And in the end, it's up to you whether you believe that or not. But that has been my attempt to uh, explain stress in Tolkien's languages and to demonstrate this tool, Tolkien Stress Analyzer, which does this whole analysis for you and maybe it's useful and you can have fun with it. And that's basically it. See you.